Um, and basically, uh, we have three presenters here this afternoon. I'll introduce each of them individually as we bring them on. Uh, in the overall scheme of things, uh, if you go back uh, to August 30th of a year ago, under the uh, executive order, the President of the United States uh, promoted CHP systems uh, and suggested people bring them into their business and uh, <clears throat> to help them A, be more competitive and B, uh, to be more environmental friendly. Uh, so we've got a push from the President of the United States. Uh, most business these days are probably going to be done through executive order rather than legislative action, but uh, they both work in any event. So uh, today, uh, our first uh, speaker will, and presenter will be Lenny Roberts. Uh, he's been a local lumberman here uh, over just over the hill in Ashfield, Massachusetts. The family's been in the business for 63 years, is it, Len? And you've been running it since how long? 32. 32 years. Uh, back about five or six years ago, uh, DEP came crashing down in his head, uh, suggesting that uh, he get rid of his diesel-operated uh, air polluting uh, system for running his sawmill and get into something else or get out of the business. Uh, he's been on a quest for the last six years to bring a uh, gasifier system into his operation. Uh, you'll learn a little bit about the system, but you'll also probably learn a little bit about what that process has involved, because uh, Massachusetts uh, is basically just uh, last year uh, surpassed California as the percentage of renewables out of their overall load is the highest in the country right now. So we think we have a forward-looking state. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we haven't uh, approved or permitted a single gasification system in this state yet. So, uh, and our, our third speaker, just I, I'm looking over at the smile on his face because he has two systems in California, which is that other state that has some very high standards. So we're going to learn a little bit about the process, a little bit about CHP and biochar. So let me just bring on Lenny Roberts from Roberts Renewable Resources and uh, go to it. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to, to be here, and I, I hope I can share uh, uh, <clears throat> some of my experience with you. Uh, we have a, like Barry said, we have a, a sawmill up in Ashfield, and uh, I've been generating my own electricity for uh, a little over 30 years. And um, as time goes on, the way the regulations change, uh, um, the state came to me and uh, told me that I needed to figure out a different alternative. And being 4.2 miles away from the electricity, uh, the three-phase power, it uh, is kind of cost prohibitive. The, um, I remember about 30 years ago they wanted $180,000 and I thought that was ludicrous. And um, six months ago it was $2.2 million and Massachusetts has come up with a rural electrification grant for a million dollars. So when I contacted them to get an update, within six months it went from 2.2 .2 to 3.9. So the, the line changes very frequently in the sand, and there's a reason they, that they call them the power company. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in, in, uh, in talking about, about this, um, this gasification system, which is from the Dominican Republic, and I have some flyers. If, sure. Be my guest. Now, the system is, is from, the, from the Dominican Republic, and, and the way it started, it, there was a gentleman from Asheville who um, came to my mill one day and said, uh, how would you like to make gas? You've got uh, a big pile of wood chips over there. And I said, geez, I, I'd love to do that. How do we go about it? Well, he says, if I know you're interested, then, then uh, uh, give me some time and I'll set it up. Well, uh, we ended up going to, um, uh, going to Italy. Um, it was a two-day, three-day stint over there. And that's where I saw the first gasifier, um, which was just uh, amazing uh, to, you know, to, to walk into a place and see this engine running and looking to see what type of fuel is going into it. And there's this 
hose about four inches in diameter um, that's coming from the gasifier going right into the turbo on the engine and and um, uh, the engine was running it was producing 60 kilowatts of electricity so the technology came from Italy and over the last six years it's it's now in the Dominican Republic the, the gentleman from Italy is working on a uh, in another direction with some other people uh, so anyway, you can, as you can see, this is the, the mill, and it's located near the Bassett Meadow, uh, the west branch of the Swift River in, uh, in Ashfield. We have a, about 500 acres at that site. Um, the land to the left is all in a floodplain, and to the right it's all forested and under a forest management plan. That's a picture of my dad from years ago, and he hates it, but it, it keeps getting into this... Uh, into the equation here anyway. He'll be 89 next month. Um, started out with horses in 1947, and uh, I've been doing it probably since I was about 10 years old in between a few other jobs. Anyway, I I'm sometimes wonder if I should have stayed at the other jobs or taken on this endeavor. There's uh, some horses that they, uh, at one time they had 12 pair of horses, five portable sawmills, and they were all over New England and New York State um, logging and, and uh, cutting lumber. My uncle is on the, the, the one with the cigarette in his hand, probably why he's not here anymore. Um, that was Gib and, and my dad, they're the ones that started the business. This was the first year that I had actually had taken it over. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, getting, getting back a little bit to the, to the gasifier and, and how I got involved in it, so the people from the Dominican, once this other gentleman, this Brad Godfrey with Biogen, got involved in the, the, the project, came to Asheville and said, you know, geez, this is great. So uh, we had applied for, a, did a feasibility study and, uh, and applied and were awarded a $400,000 grant from the Massachusetts Technical Collaborative, uh, which is now is, is a clean energy, energy center. Uh, but like... Uh, Barry had mentioned, you know, the, there's never been one of these permitted, and uh, um, when you have a small budget to work on, and uh, you know you're in the lumber business and you're trying to do your everyday chores, it's hard to to follow and to um, try to find people to work for nothing to try to get you through this uh, this turmoil. But anyway. Um, so it's at a point right now where um, I have a piece of property that, that's located within town at, where there's three-phase power. So the, the project is, is about an $8 million project to do two megawatts, and if I have to run the power out at my expense, it's another $4 million. And we're having you know issues right now and trying to, trying to find the right type of financing to get this project turned on. Um, the biochar, to, to me, I didn't know, have any idea what it was. I didn't know anything about it. Um, Barry Hollister came to me and David Yarrows came to me. and We started getting phone calls along the way. So um, I started reading up a little bit and listening to these guys and um, put this into the equation of our financial package. So, you know, 10% of what this gasifier produces will be, um, will be biochar. This one here, this is the first gasifier that I ever set eyes on. This was over in Milan, Italy. Um, that was a 60 kilowatt generator running in the back there to the other side. Uh, and the gentleman, it wasn't the greatest picture, but he's the one that actually put this together. He's got a lot of burn marks on him. Is that, a flare? It, that is a flare, and uh, they did that just for our benefit. Normally, that gas would be going right into the engine. Yeah, but they did flare that up, and I have to tell you that the the flare today on the gasifiers that they're building in, down in the Dominican are even much cleaner than that. Much cleaner. There's a, there's actually a picture of it. The gasifier is about the size of a full size pickup. It'll fit, you know, in a 40-foot container, um, and you can see a picture of the of the gas 
uh, flaring right there. I actually own that gasifier. I tried to get in under the federal government 1603 Safe Harbor Fund, so I mortgaged my house and uh, um, sent a check to the Dominican Republic, but since then it's, it's um, uh, gone by the wayside. So that particular part of, uh, of the 1603, which would have been about 30%, 33% of the total cost of the project in a check. So hopefully we can get some tax credits if we ever do get the thing turned on. This is uh, basically how the, the system would be, would be set up. Uh, you have the, the chips being dried in a, in a dryer. The, um, the chips from there go into the gasifier. Uh, from the gasifier, um, the gas goes into the two engines, and all the heat is recovered from the, the water temperature, the oil temperature, and the exhaust go in to dry the wood chips. So the wood chips, which is our fuel source, has to be dried to uh, between 5 or 10 percent moisture content. Um, that's one of the, 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 the characters uh, of the gasifier is in cleaning this gas, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, uh, it has to be at a certain, certain moisture content. There's many people that have tried it in the past and for one reason or another haven't been successful in being able to clean the gas. Uh, you can see that, you know, how it works, the wood chips, the gasifier, the engine, and the two megawatts plus the thermal heat that would come out of it. Out of it. We're agriculture in Massachusetts, so under the, the program that, that um, uh, applies to us, we would get about 10.6 cent, 10 cents per kilowatt plus um, the renewable energy credits and the sale of the biochar, sale of dry wood chips as well. The th the, one of the things I wanted to point out is that the thermal heat that comes out of this cannot be used in the equation to dry the wood chips that we're going to be gasifying. We have to find another market for those. So we were hoping to sell dry wood chips, which I think there's going to be a, uh, a, a great market for as well. Uh, so, this here just kind of tells you a little bit uh, about what I've been talking about um, as far as the process, how it works. Um, it's pretty simple. I mean, you know, and it, you think about it, all the third world countries and military installations and stuff, I mean, and these things, you know, you can drop them off in a 40-foot container. Um, if the rest of the world could have clean water and, and electricity, um, I think it'd be a lot uh, friendlier place for all of us to live in. This is the factory down in uh, Santa Domingo. Um, everything is state of the art down there. Um, the, the, the gentleman that, that, uh, that owns this, Brad Godfrey, who is part owner in the one here in Asheville as well, um, he was actually CEO of an inverter converter company and they had 7,000 employees, they had three factories around the world. So everything that he does is very meticulously thought out and um, it's of the highest standard. These are the uh, filters, the precipitators. Everything is stainless steel um, with very few elbows and as, as few welds as possible. There again, it's, uh, this is a earlier version. That's the reactor. That's uh, Port in Miami, it's the same material as the space shuttle. And if you can see, everything is, is stainless steel on it. There's the ones uh, of today that they're, uh, that they're manufacturing down there. It's about a 16 to 20 week uh, uh, time from the time you place an order for these. There's a uh, Cummings, they're working with Cummings in the Dominican. I was working with, with Caterpillar here. Um, so there is, a, you know, uh, like I said, 16 to 20 week waiting period. They've just come and just got a, a I believe it was a $50 million order to, to go to Kenya. There's buildings, uh, they've sent some of these already to Argentina, and I believe some to uh, Austria. 
It's uh, some of the electrical components with it. There's uh, about 110 automatic shutdown systems on this. That's another picture of the other reactor. Um, and it's got a, the grate in the bottom, uh, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Okay, so, so the reactor, you can see the reactor at the bottom of that reactor. Uh, there's hydraulic cylinders that lift the, the top off of that. There's a grate that goes around in there. It burns at 1,300 degrees. The biochar comes out of the bottom and can go into a wagon or bags or sacked or whatever. But Celsius or Fahrenheit? Cel see. Celsius, yes. Um, so the, the key to this thing is basically that the scrubber system, the temperature that the, uh, that the gas is, um, and that's an important thing, I guess, on the, the, the makeup of the biochar. So it goes through the reactor, through the scrubbers, electric precipitators. The gas that's clean then goes into a holding tank, and from there will go into an engine. The gas that's still contaminated, that's got the tars in it or, or, or vinegar or whatever, will go back through the reactor and burn again. So basically, like, if you have a... Uh, creosote burning in your fireplace or in a wood stove, you know, how hot that gets. Well, it actually makes the reactor and it burns it hotter. <clears throat> that kind of gives you a, a breakdown of it right there. I, I know that when I was there in the Dominican, they, the first piece of um, material that they had in here for, this, uh, for the grate, it, it melted it. Um, and it depends on the type of material that you're using, but it uh, it gets pretty hot. Everything is automated, of course. Um, they can shut this thing off or turn it on from from any one point, all computerized. And you know, um, there's recommended that you know if you've got three of these things running, which we hope to do, that. You have a guy there that you know keeps an eye on it, making sure that the wood chips don't bridge or something. <coughs> Excuse me. So it will gasify um, just about any agricultural product. There's one in Italy that's over there. It's got uh, uh, pig manure, uh, chicken manure, uh, different types of grasses, hay stuff, like, things like that. You know, just think of the municipalities, just Amherst or Springfield or the city of Pittsfield, what it costs them per year to get rid of their municipal uh, waste from, from the leaves, from the tree clippings, the grass and all that. Uh, it, it would be uh, huge for, for all of these municipalities and these towns. I mean, you could put one of these in a town or you could put 10 of them in a town. They were talking earlier about smaller installations this year. You know, it's in your, in your backyard somewhere. It's going to make jobs, continuous jobs, 365 days. When the wind blows, you get electricity. When the, excuse me. <coughs> So when the wind blows, you're going to the, the windmill makes uh, energy. The jobs that the windmill creates is when you build it, and after that, once a year, somebody comes by and gives it a couple of squirts of grease. The solar panels, the same way, they take up a lot of uh, a lot of room. You manu you put the solar panels, install them. After that, the jobs are gone. This is jobs next door to your neighbors that we can grow our way out of this dependency for oil. And it's dependable. It will always be there. Because the, whether it's a round bale of hay that some farmer can't use or, or uh, some hedgings, trimmings along the edge of his hedgerow, hedgerow. And these are some of the different types of stocks. Like I said, uh, you know, sorghum, miscanthus, forestry products, uh, uh, anything. All of the material that's being, you know, thrown in the landfills and stuff, as long as it's clean, uh, wood debris, uh, grindings, uh, it could all be put into energy. So it w just, you know, what I'm trying to stress here is that, uh, is that it's will make jobs, and the jobs will be there f forever. These are my wood chips. 
the, they're clean. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to have clean, but these are just like p uh, paper chips. Miscanthus, it's an invasive species for Massachusetts. Um, it's grown a lot in, uh, in Canada and uh, other parts of the United States. It takes absolutely no fertilizer, and uh, it's a perennial. Grow up to like, you know, 13, 14 feet high. There's some farmers over in, uh, actually, they've got some miscanthus that they planted after, excuse me, that was before they found out it was invasive species. Or, you know, you, you, t you think about uh, uh, the disaster in, in Japan. Um, you know, the gasifier, this is never going to happen. The biochar, I understand, is actually being used here to help clean up the soil, whether that's, you know, true or not, but it, uh, it's what I was, what I was told. Um, you know, these plants are huge, and they can be dangerous. Did you ever, you know, you... You hear about a tractor trailer load of oil or gasoline tipping over, you got a problem. If you've ever heard of a tractor trailer load of wood chips tipping over, not very dangerous. Here's one uh, uh, a plant over here in uh, in West Germany. Now these don't take up a lot of area. So. Like Barry said, that um, and, and the president, I guess, and uh, Governor Patrick, we're way behind the rest of the world um, with our combined heat and power projects. Uh, I actually wrote a letter to the president uh, about the situation, and I don't know if it was my letter or what, but he came up with a presidential e executive order. The power company must have got word of it too, though. There's some uh, <clears throat> some biochar, different applications. And the biochar business itself, as all of you know, probably that's why you're here. It, it's going to be a, a huge, you know, uh, business in, it, in itself. Um, I think this was on Amazon.com here, this package of for thirty nine seventy five at free shipping for for biochar. I went up to Shelburne, Vermont, uh, I believe it was two years ago. Uh, Jerry Whitefield was the, the man who built and designed the first wood pellet stoves. And now he's trying to build something to make biochar, some type of a stove or whatever. Um, they want it to be a CHP, though. Um, and th they haven't, haven't got to that point as of yet, as far as I know. So, total system is unique in its capability, modular, scalable, easy to deploy and operate. Highly flexible reactor system, wide variety of biomass fuels. Extensive, careful, ex extensive carefully designed gas cleaning and cooling system. It's a completely closed process. Um, there, no water, uh, everything gets evaporated uh, in its cooling system. Um, no big smokestacks, no smokestack, period. So um, that lets you know how friendly it could be because uh, we don't want a, um, uh, a 30 or 50 megawatt uh, plant around that uh, is only going to be 20 to 25 percent efficient. This one is between 80 to 85 percent efficient. And we talk about our jobs, and that's it. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Lennon, thank you so much for your presentation. I'm curious about something you mentioned very briefly and moved past. Uh, the drying requirements and the, uh, the, the moisture content. Mm -hmm. um, you, you then also said that uh, I think it's because of your project structure and finance that you will not be able to take advantage of that. You're going to have to sell the dried wood chips. Yep. We no, we can use the dry wood chips that we're drying, but the the thermal heat that's used to make the project more efficient cannot be calculated in using our own wood chips to gasify. Wow. You 
can't get thermal recs if you use that heat to dry. Correct. Right. So if ours is 85% efficient, okay, um, that's because we're drying wood chips and we're selling wood chips outside in the open market. The wood chips that we're, if we're drawing them and using them ourselves, that can't be, can't be calculated in the renewable portfolio standard as an efficiency. Law. Yes, under Massachusetts law. Okay, and, and again, that, that the important thing to note is that's the thermal renewable energy credits. So the yes, thermal yes, yep. Which, which, you know, even people within the state that have been working with this project, they don't get it. Yeah, and it seems like a bizarre interpretation well, of the law, but. Well, I can tell you why why it's there because you take a 50 megawatt plant and you start taking that thermal heat that's coming off of that and drying your wood chips then that would make that more efficient massachusetts doesn't want those pretty simple thank you mary booth <laughs> yes sir where does your chipped material come from how do you energize that and could the gas generate electricity to run the chipper Absolutely, absolutely. The wood chips come from our waste from our sawmill, from our lumber company. Okay, There's still a tremendous amount of it that gets left in the woods, which in turn, if this thing was to become reality, we would be bringing it in. Um, the wood chips then would get dried through a drum dryer. It would have its own burner on the drum dryer, so we'd be using some of the chips to heat, to, to heat the chips that we have to gasify. Okay, and the gasifier produces the gas that runs a generator, which will be producing electricity for our sawmill, and putting the remainder back into the grid. And like I said, that agriculture is you can do two megawatts in Massachusetts under agriculture. You can do more, but you're only going to get the net metering for the the two megawatts. Did that answer it? Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, you mentioned using unusual feedstocks like. All I can tell you uh, about the manure is that there's a, a pig farm in Italy that's doing it over there. As far as I know, they're having no problems with it. I, I think it's just because it's so hot um, that, um, you know, the waste of my understanding is just a biochar. They were in Argentina, and I got some pictures in the office where they called a, a Brad from the Dominican. A couple guys flew back to Argentina. They had rocks and bricks and nails and bolts, so that you can't gasify those. It's got to be clean stock. Yes, sir. What are your anticipated capital and operating costs, and what is your anticipated ROI on the unit? Well, the... The cost of this particular project, our cost is about $8 million for the two megawatts. Uh, the return is around seven years. So it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. The, the biochar income out of this for the, for the two megawatts is almost $600,000 a year based upon what we hear for prices and, you know, and hoping that the biochar is of, is of, of good uh, uh, value. Yes, sir. Did you hear the price of <laughs> what did I hear? Um, we calculated it at $250 a ton. Want to buy some? <laughs> when I produce it? I wish somebody would give me an intent letter. I've been trying to get one of those for six months so that I could put it in my business plan. Thank you. Is that it? Yes, sir. You're producing high temperature biochar. Is that a problem? My understanding is that it's very important on the temperature that, that the biochar comes out, but I believe it's, it's being cooled down at a certain uh, time so that it, it's still still valuable. I can't tell you, I don't know that much about it. Only what, what I've been told. Yes? 